Okay. How many of you, I know you said you have heard of, heard of LinkedIn before. Do you have an actual profile with them? Have you set up an account with LinkedIn? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll discuss that a little later as far as trying to use that to actually network and get your foot in the door for interviews and stuff. I'll go over that a little later on towards the end. <clears throat> but those, both of those are good good tools. Those are things you need to do prior to coming in for an interview. Look at the company website and also look at LinkedIn too and pull up the companies on the LinkedIn website. Okay, now some companies do phone interviews. So what you want to do to prepare for a phone interview, like the job position that I'm in now, I actually have to do a phone interview before I got this job. Some companies will take you through more than one process. Sometimes you'll have a phone interview and then you'll have an in-person an interview and then sometimes they'll call you back for a third interview to maybe interview with like the vice president or president of the company or something like that but these are just some tips for preparing for a phone interview of course all companies may not do phone interviews so don't expect that every time you apply for a job they'll interview you over the phone some companies if they have way too many applicants then they'll do a phone interview if not then they'll call you in for an in-person interview which we'll go over after we're done with this slide so prepare for a phone interview just as you would for a regular interview Okay, so you want to compile, compile a list of strengths and weaknesses. Have any of you ever thought of that, your strengths and weaknesses? Okay, so that's something that you always want to keep in mind. What are your strengths, what are your weaknesses? So then that way, the thing about a phone interview is you're on the phone, so you're not actually sitting in front of someone. So you can have all your stuff laid out in front of you, you can have your resume, you can have a sheet of paper, you can take notes. That way, you already know what to say. It's kind of scripted before you even really start the phone interview. So I like phone interviews because it kind of gives you a chance to get your nervousness out of the way before you actually go in for an in-person interview. So <clears throat> keep your resume in clear view on the top of your desk or tape it to a wall near the phone. So that way it's in your, in your sight while you're talking on the phone. Have a pen and paper ready for note taking. That's important as well. If the time isn't convenient for you, let's say that you're on lunch break or you just got home or it's early in the morning and they those are the only times that they can actually talk to you try to rearrange something so then that way you have plenty of time you can set aside anything that you have to do for that evening that afternoon that morning you can set it aside and give yourself plenty of time to answer any and all questions that they may have for you if the time is not convenient then reschedule of course okay so you want to clear the room if you're at home if you have pets kids Anybody that can be of a distraction, make sure that you have them to leave the house, leave the room, so then that way it's clear, it's quiet, and that way you can concentrate and focus. Unless you're sure your cell phone service is going to be perfect, consider using a landline. Now, most of us these days, we don't have landlines, right? Okay, if you're going to use a cell phone, make sure you're in a place where the reception is good so your phone won't cut out. Because I've had that happen to me before. I've been on the cell phone talking to a potential employer I want to go work with and the cell phone cuts out. That's the last thing you want to happen if you're on the phone with someone because now you have to try to call them back, reach that person again. You might have to go through five different people before you can even get back in touch with the person. So if you can, make sure you use a landline. If you can't, make sure you're in a uh, reception area that's good for your cell phone usage. Okay? So any questions so far? No? All right, so next, let's say you do your phone interview, it's successful, and they invite you in for an in-person interview. So now you actually have to physically go to the establishment and talk to someone in person, okay? So you wanna take the time to review common interview questions you will most likely be asked. And today, I brought with me some popular interview questions that employers like to ask. There you go. And there you go, you can pass one down to her. And if you want to just briefly look over those real quick. <clears throat> so you want to always review interview questions before going on the interview. Review sample answers and advice on how to answer these typical interview questions. Okay, so not only do you have the questions in front of you, you want to study and do some research on the best way you can answer those questions, okay? Because a lot of those questions I gave you are pretty common questions that employers would tend to ask. And then practice them with someone at home. How many of you have someone at home you can practice with? Okay, now that person might not be an expert for the position you're going to interview for, but that person can help you work on your posture and your eye contact. I've been interviewed before. 
has been looked over because of their posture. Okay, so if you're sitting in a chair, if you're sitting with your arms folded, if you're sitting slumped over, if you're sitting any type of way that doesn't suggest that you're interested in the person that's actually talking to you, then that can turn an employer away too. Also, eye contact. How important do you think eye contact is? Very important, right? If I'm talking to you and you're looking down, if you're looking off to the side, if you're looking up at the ceiling, what does that tell the hiring manager or their employer? What does that tell them about you? Not confident. Yeah, exactly, you're not confident, okay? That means that you cannot look them straight in the eye and talk to them with confidence to give answers to the questions that they ask you, okay? So especially if you're applying for a customer service role and you're having an interview and you can't look that person straight in the eye when they're talking to you, does that mean that you'll be able to look customers in the eye when they're asking you questions or if they're needing to know information about stuff? They're going to take, you might be able to, but they don't know that. An interview is made for them to tell what type of person you are and how you react in certain, in certain situations, okay? <clears throat> so, of course, practice with someone at home and practice on body posture and eye contact. I can't emphasize that enough. Those are the two most important things. I did an interview a while ago with someone, and I'm not going to say this was, it wasn't funny because the person actually needs to go and practice more on her interviewing skills. But she, it was a panel interview that I was on, and she had her resume sitting right in front of her with her binder open and the resume sitting in her binder. She held her binder and resume the whole entire time she was talking to us. Not only did she mess up by having her resume in front of her, she didn't make eye contact with any of us. We would ask her a question, she would look off to the back of the room, she would look at the ceiling, she would look down at her resume repeatedly, never do that. If I could have a video of that, I would show you what not to do during an interview, and that's one of the things you don't want to do. You study, you look over your resume before you come to an interview. Of course, you're probably going to have to give the employer a copy of it, but you don't ever want to have your resume sitting in front of you. You should already know what's on it. So, but if you're doing a phone interview like I just went over, it's okay to have your resume in front of you then, so then that way you can kind of be more detailed in the, in the questions and the answers that they um, that they um, ask. So any questions so far? No? Okay, so another important thing is dress code. How to dress, what not to wear, okay? The picture pretty much explains it all. Now, if you go interview at a place, let's say you're going to work at Walmart, then in that particular situation, you don't need to come to the interview in a suit, but you still wanna come presentable. You don't wanna go there looking like that, obviously, but don't wear jeans. If you go to an interview, don't wear jeans, even if it is at Walmart. You can wear something maybe like a polo shirt and some khakis or something, but don't wear jeans to an interview, okay? <clears throat> and then of course, you see the, the young lady right there, don't ever go to an interview looking like that as well. So no revealing clothing, too much jewelry, don't ever have on too much jewelry. Baggy clothing, of course. Poor footwear. You don't want to go to an interview with tennis shoes on. Now I know there is a company, UPS, that actually has an interview process where they actually take the person around the facilities and they actually state that prior to you coming in that you can wear jeans and tennis shoes because you're going to be walking around for a while because they're showing you, showing you stuff. But other companies, nine times out of ten you're not going to be doing that, so try not to wear tennis shoes. Okay, and no hats, of course no denim, which means no, means no jeans, stained clothing, you want to make sure your clothes are, are clean and they're not full of stains when you go in, and no t-shirts or anything with graphics on them. So you don't want to walk into an interview with like a Batman shirt on or Superman or something like that. So stay away from those scenes. <clears throat> okay, so this is kind of how they would like for women to dress when you're going to an interview. Like I said, in every single case, you're not going to dress like this. It just depends really on where you're going to interview at. The difference between going to interview for a cashier position at Walmart versus going to interview for a vice president position at, at Walmart is going to be two different things, correct? So you kind of want to dress according to, to the position, but still never wear jeans or baggy clothing or anything like that. And then for a guy, you want to, of course, wear slacks, dress shoes, he has one to suit, 
like I said, if he's going to interview for a vice president position with the company, he'll probably go into his interview looking like that. If he's going to interview for a department manager position at Walmart, he's probably going to be dressed down a little bit less than, less than that. But try to use your own best judgment. So I've done, and when I worked at Walmart in the HR department, I did plenty of interviews where people came in in jeans, they came in in t-shirts, they came in in tennis shoes. I mean, those are just things you don't want to do. They look at it as Walmart is, you can wear whatever you want to to Walmart. <laughs> and that's not always, not always the case. So you still want to dress appropriately because Walmart may not be the only job you're ever going to interview for. This may be your first job, it may be your second job. You might be in college at the time, so you want to get practice for that stuff now. So when you do actually go interview for something else with a big corporation or organization, you want to get practice dressing appropriately for interviews. Okay, and of course, practice makes perfect, okay? We just went over that, practice, practice, practice. If you know that you're going to be going in for an interview, let's say two weeks before you actually go in, you want to practice as much as you can in that two weeks before you actually go in for the interview. So you want to pick somebody. Matter of fact, you can practice with more than one person. You can practice with your mom or your sister, your brother, aunt, uncle, whoever you want to practice with, and tell them what you want them to look for when you're practicing with them. Ask them, is my eye contact good? Is my posture good? Are all of those things good? And have them take note of that. Give them the interview questions and have them look at your posture. And then secondly, what you want to do <clears throat> is whenever you're answering the questions, give them some answers, some popular answers to the questions and have them look, at, look over those too. So when you're answering the questions, they can tell you, hey, maybe you need to elaborate some more. Maybe you need to not be so long-winded. And the problem that I used to have when I used to interview a lot, when I was actually the one going to the interviews, was giving long-winded answers. So if somebody asks you, a hiring manager asks you a question, don't take five minutes to answer a question. You want to make it short and, and sweet because they don't have a ton of time because they probably have other people that they're interviewing after you. So they kind of want to get you in and out. They want you to get straight to the point. I mean, I've had so many interviews that I've done and people have sat there and they've gave me a 10 minute answer for something that should only took two minutes to answer. And by that time, I've lost interest. If you take that long to answer a question, then we've probably already, already counted you out. So if I asked you to tell me about yourself, I don't want you to tell me, take 15 minutes to tell me about yourself. You know, kind of give general information like where you went to school, your previous work history, and then leave it at that, okay? <clears throat> so, of course, like we said, practice mock interview questions with friends or family. Research some facts about the company you will be interviewing with, of course. We went over that at the beginning. So those are just some things that you want to do before you go into the interview. Okay? The day of the interview. Make sure you have directions to the interview location. Okay? That's important. So there have been people that get lost. You always want to allow yourself time to get to where you need to go, correct? In case you do get lost, in case there's traffic, in case something happens, you want to allow yourself plenty enough time for any of that. Okay, so you actually want to have the directions. These days we all have GPS on our smartphones. We have MapQuest. We can print out directions. There's so many things that do not give us an excuse to be late to an interview. <clears throat> so, of course, leaving enough time to arrive by 15 minutes early. Don't ever arrive way too early to an interview. If you get to an interview 30 minutes early, that makes the person that's interviewing you feel rushed. And they don't want to feel rushed. I have people now that come to see me and for an appointment for whatever reason, and I tell them their appointment is at two o'clock and they come at 1.15. I mean, that's way, way too early. You don't ever want to do that. So if you're gonna arrive early, leave yourself about 15 minutes or so in between the time your interview is supposed to start and the time that you get there. Remember the person's name you are interviewing with so you will know who to ask for. That's also important. If you get to a place and you say you have an interview at three o'clock, and they ask you with who, and you tell them I don't know, then how does that look? That doesn't look too good, right? So you always want to make sure, because nine times, well, I'm not going to be going to say nine times out of ten. Ten times out of ten, they tell you who you're going to be interviewing with. So make sure you write that person's name down, because if you get there and you don't know who you have to interview with, 
then that's going to now they have to search and they have to call around and ask different people do you have an interview at three o'clock and then the person that's supposed to be interviewing you they're going to be like they couldn't even remember my name so how am i going to have trust this person to be able to do whatever job for me <clears throat> turn off your cell phone or either leave it in the car that's the worst thing one of the worst things you can have happen is your cell phone go off during the interview if it starts ringing in the middle of an interview, then that doesn't look good as well. So I would just say just turn it off. I mean, a lot of people don't like to leave their phones in the car. I mean, I really don't like to either. So just turn it off and just put it away. So then that way you won't even have to worry about it going off at all. <clears throat> and then next, when you enter the room, always shake the interviewer's hand. Okay, so when you come in, make sure you shake their hand, make sure you greet them and wait for them to tell you to take a seat. Don't walk in and just sit down, wait for them to, and this is just some common courtesy things because some interviewers are really picky and they look at things like that. So if you come in and you just sit down without them telling you to, or if you come in and maybe start picking up stuff on their desk, asking them what this is, or you know, sometimes they may look at that as a little bit over overbearing if you do that. And then, like I said, don't sit down until you are asked to sit down. So when you walk into the room, you come in and then they'll, either take their seat first and tell you to sit down or they'll either say have a seat here or because you may not even be sure where they want you to sit. So they may bring you into a room and you go off and sit on the other side of the table or something and that's not where they're going to sit down at. So those are things that you have to really pay attention to. <coughs> okay, so interview questions. Okay, so we sat down, you shook their hand, You've made room for a little small talk. You know, you've had a couple of minutes to talk about some stuff that aren't related to the, to the interview. So you want to answer the questions honestly. So I know sometimes you'll get asked questions in an interview and they completely stump you with the question that they ask you about. So you kind of just make up something right then and there because you can't think of anything. Try to answer the interview questions honestly, as honestly as possible. It's okay to ask the interviewer to repeat the question because I know some interview questions are like five questions in one and you may be thinking to yourself like what did they just say? It's okay to ask them to repeat the question over again to make sure you have it, have it right. Do not take too long to answer questions and avoid ums. So I know some of us have a tendency to say um a lot. I know I used to have a, ten a tendency to say that as well. They ask you a question, you answer it, and you're like, um, and then you answer, finish some more, um, don't try not to do that. Because if you take too long to answer questions, they kind of look at it as you're slower to, and some of us are slower to process things, which is not a problem. But if you take way too long to answer questions, then they think at that point in time you just weren't prepared for the interview. That's why I say print out questions and study interview questions before you go in to the interview, okay? And always make eye contact with the interview, of course, like I said, and do not stare. Now, some of them can take that as kind of a creepy thing if you stand, sit there and you just like stare at them, like just, yeah. <laughs> so you wanna make eye contact, but just try not to just stare at them the whole entire time. Answer the question, brief, short, and to the point, and then if an interviewer is sitting there with their notes, and their clipboard and they're writing down, you answer the question and they're writing down some stuff. Don't think that you answered the question incorrectly or you gave them a bad answer. They have to take notes when you, they're interviewing you. So if they take a long pause, and some of them may even tell you, don't mind my pause. If I don't say anything or respond to you, I'm taking notes. So don't take that as, oh, I'm, you know, start freaking out or anything like that. Because I know before I got this job, I went on a billion interviews. <laughs> and at some point in time, you'll start to get discouraged. You're wondering what you're doing wrong. Why are you not getting any responses? Why is nobody calling you back? And I had to look at my interviewing skills myself and correct some things and clean up some stuff in order to be able to successfully pass an interview. And it's, <clears throat> a lot of times it's those small things that you don't even realize that's holding you back. Like as you walk in the room and you sit down before they tell you sit down. You might have done that with the last five employers and all of them said, well, she's kind of inconsiderate. I don't think I would want her working for me. It's small things. We can't control everything that an employer looks for, correct? So you want to try to make sure you have 99.9% .9 of the things correct 
for your interviewing strategies in order to do the best possible job that you can. We actually have a friend, my wife and I have a friend, she, one of her problems is she takes way too long to answer questions during the interview. She is a very talkative person, so when they ask her a question, she takes forever to answer the question. So if I came up to you and say, tell me about your leadership style, you want to be as brief as you possibly can. You don't want to tell them about your last 10 years of leadership skills that you have because that's why they have your resume, correct? So you want to just give them your explanation, your reasoning for your leadership skills and try to make them as short and sweet as possible in order to be able to give them the best answer that they're looking for, okay? <clears throat> and then post-interview, that's important as well. So. You want to always smile and shake their hand before leaving and to thank them. So once you're done, you, <clears throat> you just don't want to get up and leave. Because I know some of us, after an interview was over, we, we know that we, we bonded, right? After the interview is over, you're automatically thinking to yourself, like, I messed that up. There's just no way I'm going to get this job. You want to stay confident throughout the whole entire process because they can tell if you lose confidence before the end of the interview. Because some of that <clears throat> is shown in our body movements, right? So they can sit there like, well, they, you know, they don't look very confident right now because I know I've been in those situations to where I'm done with the interview and I just know it's over. I don't, you know, I'm thinking to myself, there's no way I'm going to get this job. It's over. I don't have any confidence right now. And they see that. And they can tell, like, if you don't shake their hand when you leave or if you just get up and walk out, things like that, they know, like, okay, well, I definitely won't, don't want to have this person working for me now because they lack confidence and plus they didn't shake my hand, they didn't show very much courtesy after the interview was over. So also, after the interview is over, continue your job search. Okay, an interview does not guarantee you the job, right? I mean, an interview will get you the job, but it also doesn't guarantee you the job because they have to go back and discuss it with their superiors or other employees as well on the right fit for the position. So always continue looking for another job even after the interview is over. I know there's been times where I interviewed for a job and I was like just confident about myself. I was like, there's just no way anybody beat me out for this job. I had the best interview I've ever had. I had the best resume. You know, me and the hiring manager, we talked about the Cowboys game while I was there. You know, me and him went to the same college. That doesn't guarantee you anything because the next person after you could have came in and had an even better interview and they went with that person instead of you. So now you stop looking for a job, waiting for them to call you back, and now they've finally sent you that standard email to your email address saying, even though your qualifications are good, we've decided to pursue other candidates. So now you've wasted two weeks waiting for somebody to get back with you. So I always continue looking for another job. Evaluate yourself, and when I mean evaluate yourself, after the interview is over, look back over everything that you've just done, okay? So just matter, like matter of fact, while you're going through the interview, think about what you're doing during the interview. Make sure you're making eye contact, making sure you're not talking way too much, make sure you're not fumbling around with your pen, or, because I know I have a bad habit, when I have one of those clicker pens, I'm sitting there with the pen in my hand and I'm just steadily clicking on the pen and that's annoying to some people. So make sure you have nothing in your hands when you're doing the interview, okay? So you wanna go back and evaluate everything you've done over the whole entire process, how you prepared for it, how you did during the interview, how you did after the interview, evaluate the whole thing so then that way you can go back and make any adjustments. Just like if anybody's in the sports, what do teams usually do? They have a bad game, the next game, they're going to do, they try to do better because they go back and make adjustments and evaluate how they played the previous game, correct? You want to do the same thing for when you have an interview. Go back and make adjustments. Remember the difficult questions. Now, I know when y'all have had an interview before, you've always had that one tough question or two tough questions where you were just like, I do not know how to answer that question. Get on the internet and look it up. I mean, that's pretty much all you would have to do. Get on there and look it up. And then that way you can go back and practice on that one particular question. Because I know I've had questions before where I'm just like, how do I answer that question? I was just stumped. And then finally it dawned on me one day, Marvin, that's what the internet is for. Get on the internet, look it up, and practice it. Okay? And then of course make a follow-up phone call. There's nothing wrong with that. If you haven't heard back from the person in about a week or so, 
pick up the phone, call them, email them, and say, hey, you know, this is such and such. I had an interview with you last Friday at 2. I was just wanting to see where you're at in the process. Just something very simple like that. And also, too, something I want to add in there that's not on there is to send them a thank you email or either call them thanking them for, for them interviewing you. So that's something that you want to do as well. All right? Any questions? Was that information helpful? Okay, so like I said, when you're interviewing, just make sure that you remain confident. Go back, do some research, and evaluate the way. Every time you have an interview, if you get turned down for it, make sure that you evaluate each and every interview to see what you, see what you can improve on. Because I've been there before. I've had tons of interviews. I've been rejected, and there's been days where I just never thought I would get, get a job. So, I mean, you have to stay confident in your search. Make sure you have your resume with you at all times. You all, always want to bring more than one copy of your resume to interview. Bring a few. So then that way, in case you're doing a panel interview or something, everybody that's sitting on that panel can have a copy of your resume so they can look at it while they're, while they're interviewing you. Because you'll never know who will be there to interview, who's going to come in, who's going to ask you questions. And there's also some interview questions. This is a popular interview question that people are never sure of how to answer this. And when they ask you what your salary requirements are, I don't know if anybody's ever been asked that before, but something that you want to tell them is you're flexible and you're willing to negotiate salary. Don't ever give them a number. Because if you give them a number, a lot of times the hiring manager either think that you're you know, lowering your standards too much or either they think you're asking for way too much. So salary is not really supposed to be discussed until you're offered, offered the job. And then that way you can make your decision. Then they, you ask them about that and then you base your decision on what you want to do off the salary requirements at that point in time. But don't ever tell them, you know, you're applying for a job. Let's say you're applying for a department manager job at like Marshalls or Ross or something like that and they ask you your salary requirements and you tell them you want to make $40,000 a year. Now, do you actually think a department manager at Ross or Marshalls is going to make $40,000 a year? Probably not, unless you're a, an assistant manager or a store manager. Maybe they uh, get those salaries, but as an hourly employee, they're probably not going to pay you $40,000 a year. So just tell them you're flexible, you're willing to negotiate, and then that way they'll know that you're willing to work with them. All right? so. That's all I have, unless y'all have any questions or anything that you want to ask. No questions? Okay. So you have those interview questions with you. You can take those home, um, look up some answers for them, and that's all I have. So that's it.